That was really good. It was the first time I've done a show there. Um, we were in uh, Porto and Lisbon, um, and both really good venues and a really good crowd. We really enjoyed it, and we'd like to go back. I, I've always felt the same about performing live. I never really wanted to have to do it to be physically present. I always wished that I could just do a studio album like Kate Bush did, and then never tour, <laughs> and just just you know do videos, make films, and that, that would be the only way, you know, to for people to see me. For this record, for Unflesh, I did want to try to. Engage engage the live performance a bit more and to enjoy it and to get more out of it myself so like I do with all Gazelle Twin identities I created a visual aspect really that, that in one in one level communicates the themes of the album but on another it enables me to um, be able to perform with confidence and to be able to to be present um, in, a, in a different way, in a way that I can't do when I'm not in that costume, if that makes sense. I, I find it very liberating to be in disguise and to cover my face. Um, I think I've always been intrigued by costume and masks, and I think when you, when you watch people react to somebody wearing a costume or a mask, it's very clear, especially children actually, it's a very clear kind of balance between fear and uncertainty and then kind of entertainment. Um, and I'm interested in that, the side which is uncertainty and fear because I think it's an ancient thing to, to wear costume and use costume and of course tribes all over the world still utilize that in a very serious way in their culture. And I think in Europe we had that culture thousands of years ago, we, we had a very strong pagan culture. And for me, when I've researched this, I, I've, I've been interested in this idea that these identities and these characters that, that have been created over thousands of years seem to uh, represent fear or, or the object of these uh, fears of a collective group of people. What happens is that they almost wear the clothes of their demon, if that makes sense. That, I'm interested in confronting fears in that way through masks and also just, the, just to have that effect over people, to, to have the power over people when you remove a human face or you replace it with a face that's distorted or it's enlarged or it's a, an animal for example people do react in a very strange way and sometimes it can be just really fun to play with that. I, yeah, I'm always surprised when um, I'm praised for, for something I've created. It's, it's as much as you try not to think about that when you're making work, like every artist has to try and block the, the idea of how it's going to be received and whether people will like it or not whilst they're making the work. It's always nice to have a bit of validation, especially from um, publications like The Quietus who are very well respected and you know they have a very broad interest in music and politics and culture in general so to have them uh, think of me in such a high way was, was just amazing and you know it really it really kind of made me feel good made me feel proud. <laughs> Here it comes. I do notice fewer fewer producers, you know, who are female are on bigger festival uh, lineups. Um, but I did just do a festival in Krems called Donau Festival, uh, which was just last week, and it was a very huge festival, lots of big names. But every single night that was curated had a pretty much an equal balance of female producers to to male um, artists. So. I was really, I, you shouldn't have to be surprised, you shouldn't even think about it, but when I saw the lineup, I did think, oh, that's really great because that doesn't happen very often and thank goodness that it's starting to move and there's so many artists who deserve that platform and to be on an equal footing with many of their contemporary male producers. So it's, it's, I think it's changing and I feel really positive about it. I just experiment in my bedroom and <laughs> it's very private and very, uh, I try to just take away any, any conscious uh, um, act of, of thinking of myself in that way. But I do, I do come from a classical background and I'm, I've always been interested in the voice and um, 
Meredith's experiments with the voice. So Meredith Monk was one of my, you know, all-time most interesting, amazing um, vocalists and artists, really. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm among a, quite a few uh, producers now who are using voice in, in a different way and who happen to be female. Um, and, you know, we do get kind of grouped together because of that, because of our gender, but... I think part of that is that we have collective influences also because, you know, when we look through history, just in the same way that you look through the history of art, uh, you know, there's only a few women. So <laughs> we naturally draw from the few, um, I think. So it just maybe seems a bit more uh, per prominent than it, than it really is, but this will change, I'm sure. Hi, I'm Gazelle Twin. I'm here talking to Rhymes and Beats.